Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar. Today we are going to talk about the Essex MBA. My name is Maria and I'll be the moderator on behalf of Unimai. I would like to introduce you to our speakers, James Fowler, who is um, the MBA director and Jimmy Adams, a candidate for the Essex MBA. And of course, uh, Darshini, who will um, be also, who also works at Essex and she will be a co-moderator with me and she will help with the Q&A section. Before giving the word to my guests, I would like to invite you all um, to uh, type your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, you can ask um, uh, your questions uh, the whole during the whole session, and at the end, we will uh, have uh, some minutes to answer each question. So James, uh, thank you for uh, joining us. I am giving the word to you. Fantastic, Maria. Thank you very much for the introductions and hello and welcome to everyone. Um, good afternoon. Thank you very much indeed for giving up your time um, uh, to listen in. I hope this will be useful to you. I hope it'll be interesting to you. And of course, you have an opportunity to ask any questions as we go along, which we will look at at the end. So do please pop them in the chat box and we will we will come around to them. So like Maria said, I'm James Fowler. I'm the, um, the MBA director and I'm going to talk about or give you what I would consider to be a, a kind of brief overview of, uh, of what's to come on the Essex MBA. So away we go. Next slide, please. So there we are. There'll be a quick introduction to the business school as a whole. Um, I will then look in some more detail at what the specific modules have to offer. So I'll give you some highlights. We'll talk a little bit in some more detail about admission requirements, um, and I'll hand over to my colleague Darshini for that. And then myself and Jimmy Adams, who's very kindly come in today, will um, uh, conduct a short interview and discussion um, with someone who's who's presently here, who can give you the view from the coalface um, uh, about how the MBA works uh, and what's uh, what's good about it um, uh, and what he's found so far. We'll conclude uh, with a session where we answer your questions as they uh, as they pop up on the chat. Next slide, please. Super. So headline points that I, I want to um, uh, want to share with you. The building itself, very attractive, very modern. And I like to think that we don't just talk about sustainability at Essex. We walk the walk um, uh, as well as talking the talk uh, because it is a carbon neutral building. And indeed, when it was built, it was the first of its kind um, um, in the UK. What are the attractions, though? Um, let's look at what it offers. First of all, if you are work, living and working here, you have easy access to London. It's about an hour's train journey away, a little bit under. So you have access to the London jobs market, um, um, all the firms and organisations that are hiring there. Um, but you are having access to that at a fraction of what you would pay if you were trying to live and work in London and study in London as you go along. So the way I like to see it is you have access to all the benefits, um, but you're not paying the prices that the people um, uh, who are in London will be doing. Our fee, um, which Darshini will talk more about in due course, represents outstanding value for money um, uh, as against our major competitors. Um, uh, and as a part of that, which I'll talk about a little bit in more, uh, more detail in a moment, we are double accredited. Uh, we have both the AMBER accreditation um, uh, on our courses and also more recently the whole business school has um, achieved at what we call AACSB um, accreditation as well. And that makes us quite a rare business school. Actually, there are relatively few people who have AMBER accreditation uh, and even fewer who have both AACSB and AMBER. Next up then, the design of the MBA itself, um, and I've been very keen on this in my time in, as director, is to make sure that we focus on giving you as many real-time experiences as we can. Um, yes, there is an element of theory, uh, which is inevitable with any course, and I think a very necessary part of any course at a university. But in my view, we give you a transformation experience when we give you experiential learning. So as we'll see in the moment when I talk more about the modules, we have a real focus on making sure that you are in contact and are taught by, in fact, a lot of the time by practitioners uh, as well as ac uh, academics. What else have we got? Um, about 50 yards away out of the window just to my right, there's a very large building, the Innovation Center, and that in a sense, it's dedicated to assisting um, students and MBAs here with startups. So if you're a keen entrepreneur, there's a wide variety of CCORN funding available to you and dedicated professionals and investors on hand who will hear you out um, and you can put your proposition to them. Um, if it's plausible, um, they will start you off with what they call CCORN funding and then move you steadily up as your business expands. 
Lastly, then, as I said a moment ago, um, we don't just talk the talk, we walk the walk as well. Sustainability is a very important part of what we do here. It's a very significant part of the curriculum, uh, and you will be doing that all in what you see there, the UK's first zero carbon in business school building. And you can see a little photo of it at the top of the, uh, the screen there. Next slide, please. So I spoke a moment ago um, about AMBER and AACSB, and I'll just explain to you a little bit more detail about what that actually means. So AMBER is something called the Association of MBAs, and essentially what they do is they periodically, at one, three, and five-year intervals, send out teams of top-level academics to inspect business schools and make sure that their MBA program is up to scratch. So we face a fairly serious and rigorous inspection program here, um, roughly every three years, sometimes more frequent than that, and it's designed to make sure that we are doing uh, what we what we say we do. So don't just take it from us, all right? We do, don't just mark our own homework. People come in and make sure that we're performing up to scratch externally as well. And I'm happy to say that we were first AMBER accredited in 2019. Um, the AMBER team came back again in 2022. And they're very pleased with what they uh, saw and they gave us another five-year endorsement, which is actually quite rare. You'd be glad to hear though, we didn't quite get off the hook. Um, we have to report more frequently than that. <clears throat> so there's an intermediate report we must give as well. So I think the meaning that lies behind these sort of nice acronyms, which put us in the top 2% of business schools, is that we get checked up on pretty regularly by people who are external to the school, and they are ensuring that the quality of what we do um, uh, is it meets sufficient standards. Um, so they are a very powerful endorsement of what happens here at Essex. And I hope you can come here confident that what we provide is not just good because we say it is, um, it's good because other people from outside come in and say that as well. Next slide. So a little bit more detail now then about the modules and how they work. Next slide. So what I'm, you can see in front of you now is what I would call a typical module. Now there are 14 modules you'll need to take. Some of them differ for reasons that I will come to in just one moment, but a typical module looks like this. So it's quite intense, happens over a week. You will have four days continually um, 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 at the school. Um, being having lectures, having workshops, having seminars and having assessments. We give people Wednesdays off. Um, I say off, you will be expected to do reading, perhaps work on assessments, other activities in that time, but there won't be lectures um, in that period. And I think that's important because as well as sitting there and, and learning and interacting, you need to reflect. And really the Wednesdays are set aside for that, for that job. But generally speaking, what are you looking at? You're looking at a four day week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday free for your own devices, Thursday, Friday, and you're going to be in here from 10 till five o'clock um, as you go along. So an intensive program. There are some weeks you will have off, um, not all that many until the latter end of the program. So be prepared to work hard most of the time. How does the assessment work? Well, generally, but not on all the uh, modules, at the end of that week on the Friday, you will have a group presentation. We take presentation very seriously because we think that the skill of public speaking is a really, really important thing in business, irrespective of what kind of business you're in, public sector, private sector, or the third sector. And so you'll find yourself frequently assessed on your ability to stand up. We also think that that's a necessary formative assessment as well. So we hope that you leave here more confident when you arrive on that, but it's a very, very important skill to, to possess. And we, we attach a lot of importance to it. So you'll find a lot of assessment in, uh, in, that, in that area. What you'll also get um, um, is a, a written assignment, usually in the format of a report, and you have a little bit longer to do this. So you'll find that assigned to you towards the end of your week. You then have a whole week in which to write that, a couple of weekends, and then it will be due in not the immediate Monday following the, um, uh, the, the week, the module you've just completed, but the Monday after that. So you have about 10 days in which to, in which to do it. The program is fast paced. Um, and the reason why we turn those assessments around so quickly on you is partly to reflect the, the very genuine pressures, I think, of the, the business environment, but also because we're moving you through a succession of modules quite rapidly and you're gonna be working hard on them. And we think that you need to be able to have closure on a certain topic before you start taking another one. So you can really concentrate and commit to each topic in turn. So that's the, the thinking that lies behind um, uh, that format. Now, I mentioned that most modules were like this, but not all of them. There are a number of exceptions, largely because of the topic area. So finance and accounting is something we take very seriously. Most MBAs take very seriously indeed, and consequently, two weeks are devoted to it as opposed to one. 
We also have a couple of modules, directors' workshops that are spread throughout the whole of the MBA rather than concentrated in one week. And that's because we have an external speakers program that we want to distribute rather than concentrate just in one area. And then we have a couple of other weeks where we have people in from the outside to deliver what we call business planning week and consultancy week. And that's where you'll work 24 seven with practitioners over quite an intense period. And they differ as well, um, partly because outside um, practitioners come in to deliver those weeks. They're a little bit different in how they're, um, they're formatted. Finally, then one aspect of the MBA is you're asked to write a, a large report at the end of it, be that a business plan or a consultancy report, roughly 10,000 words. And again, that differs from most taught modules because that's something that you're expected to take on. And while you're supervised, you won't have daily uh, lectures on that. And that's something that you do uh, or you set your own timetable for rather than them uh, being required here at the university. So there you go. That's a, a, admittedly a, quite a brief, um, quite a rapid, but I think useful overview of typically what a, what a module looks like in the Essex MBA and um, uh, the few exceptions that there are to that and the reasons for those exceptions. Can we roll on? Next slide, please. There we go. And a couple more clicks, if you don't mind, just to show everyone what you've got. Fantastic. Right. So there are, as I said before, there are 14 modules you'll need to complete. Um, that is of a choice of 16, and I'll explain that in just one moment. So you can see that there's a selection there of compulsory modules, each one worth 10 credits. You then have optional modules, um, of which you just choose one. This year, there are three. Next year, um, I hope to see you here, there'll be a choice of five. And you can see that there are new modules, new optional modules coming in digital marketing and growing a sustainable business. And then finally, there are two modules uh, which we call capstone because they are essential. Um, you must pass them. One of them is that you can either engage in what we call business planning week, or you can take consultancy week, depending on your interests. And then finally, you must do the MBA project. Um, um, and you can see that they constitute roughly a third of your marks overall. And we regard them as, I suppose, like it says, they're the capstone, the pinnacle, if you will, um, of your achievements and activities while you're here over the course of the year. So I hope that gives you a, a sense of how the system all fits together and how you eventually arrive at 180 credits, uh, which is um, what you require and what you'll receive from the, uh, the Essex MBA. Next slide, please. So I said I'd talk about a couple of highlights and here they go. These are the bits of the program that I think elevate Essex over most other business schools and see what you think. So. We take the title of the MBA very seriously, and it's, it makes you a master of business administration. What does that really mean? We're looking at developing you as a professional. And the way I see our MBAs is not, in a sense, as, as students necessarily. You're professionals, and you've elected to spend effectively a sabbatical with us, a year or so, or perhaps two or three if you're here part time. Um, and then you're going to go back into the world again. So we take you very seriously as professional managers um, and you've elected to come and visit us if you will partake of learning whilst you're here and then you're going to go back into the world um, um, enhanced and augmented i hope and we we look at people's knowledge we look at people's skills and above all we look at their behaviors so we think you come to us with a lot of knowledge already all right that's why you're your managers we think you have a number of skills as well although we can probably add to those as we go along but most importantly, we hope that we can change your behaviors in ways that will benefit you in your career throughout your time, the rest of your, your time um, um, in the world of work. Um, and indeed, not just in any sector, but have a kind of ubiquitous utility across whatever profession it is that you are going back into as we go along. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, through the director's workshops, which are, as it says there, an external speaker series. Now, they're more than just speaker series in, in lots of ways. So someone will come in and they will give a, a presentation. But above and beyond that, we also ask them to run a series of exercises with you. Right. So you will be, in a sense, integrated into whatever it is they're talking about in a very literal way and given an experience. What's more, we also create a series of lunches over that period. And again, numbers of people you can, if you want to talk to the speaker personally, you will have the chance to do that privately over coffee and you can buttonhole them. And I think that's very important. We then have Consultancy Week and Business Planning Week, which are very similar in many ways. We know that a lot of people who come on the MBA want to set up their own business or are involved in running their own business. We would probably suggest to them that they might want to take part in, in Business Planning Week. We also know that a lot of people who are on the MBA envisage a career, perhaps in consultancy. And again, Consultancy Week might be more attractive to them in that sense. But the key thing really, irrespective of which one of those you feel is most useful to you, is that we bring in 
actual entrepreneurs, actual consultants to work with you and in, in your syndicates um, over the course of a week. And essentially, we put you through a fairly demanding experience. If you're on the business planning week, um, you will buy a business, you will run a business, and then you will sell a business in the course of five days. And that's in real time. If you're on consultancy week, you'll work to win a consultancy bid, deliver a consultancy report, and then bid for more work again all in the course of one week. And that's a pretty demanding experience. It's quite intense, but we think that that's the one that really, in a sense, puts the seal on your experiences here at Essex, because it's real time. Hard, you know, hard work, demanding work, but the, the value you extract from that is really, really significant. So there you go. That's, a, a, I think, what I would regard as the, the highlights of what we have to offer here above all the other things we do. Next slide, please. Right. Um, right. Yes. Over here, to you, Darshini. Thank you so much. Um, so, yeah. So to be um, eligible to apply uh, for our MBA program, um, we ask you to have a first degree. Um, it could be from any subject, uh, but it's required that you have a second upper class um, and above. But if you don't have that, then we ask um, for at least five years of managerial experience. Um, so either in people management, budget management, or project management. Yeah. So, um, so if you have this, you are our ideal candidate. So to apply, it's very straightforward. Everything is done on our website. So these are the things that you will need to apply for our program, which is your undergraduate transcripts, um, a personal statement to tell us what you want to do um, the SX MBA, an up-to-date CV, and two references. Now, um, I've not included English here. So if English isn't your first um, language, then you will be required to also submit IELTS um, or equivalent um, qualifications such as TOEFL, um, TOEFL, IBT, and um, the rest. Um, so but I would like to highlight that this is not required during initial application. So you can apply without IELTS. Um, if an offer is possible, you will be receiving a conditional offer. Um, so once you've submitted a formal application, it goes to our admissions offices, and then the next stage would be an interview. So you will be invited um, for an interview if your first stage of application is successful. Yeah, and um, the decision of whether you get to be, you get to join us um, in the program will depend on how you perform on the interview because obviously you've passed um, the first stage. Now, we also have a uh, MBA Dean's Award Scholarship allocation for candidates. Um, a thing to note here is that there is no separate application for our scholarship um, opportunity. So it's really important that when you submit the application, it's sort of like a two-in-one um, application where you apply for the program and for the scholarship as well. So it's really, um, so we use a holistic approach. So we take a look at your personal statement. We take a look at your CV as well as the answers that you give us um, in the interview. So uh, we do have a generous amount of scholarship for both UK and international um, candidates for the October 2024 and January 2025 intake. Um, and the next thing for you to notice the our program fee. So like James have mentioned in the very first slide, it's really good value for money, our MBA program. Um, the tuition fees is fixed. Um, it's 25,000 pounds for the entire um, duration of your course. Um, I think, yeah. Um, handing it over to you, James and Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you, Darshini. And if I may just linger a moment on what you said a moment ago. So sure. uh, as MBA director, I'm aware of the price of other MBAs naturally just goes with the territory. right? And I can promise you that that is as against our competitors, quite outstanding good value. I can also promise you, um, uh, semi off the record, that next year I will be pressing for a very considerable <laughs> rise in that fee because I know that it, it's, it's in a sense it's being undersold at the moment. So my advice to you is to to get in there and and grab that before I um start lobbying well to make that that fee go up because at the moment that is that is remarkable value if I may say. Anyway, um, enough on that. Let's move on. Um, Jimmy Adams has very kindly agreed to join us. Jimmy, thank you very much indeed. Jimmy joined us in October 2023, so he's about halfway through-ish, there or thereabouts, of the whole 12-month experience. Um, Jimmy, welcome. And I'm going to ask you a series of questions, but do feel free to elaborate Okay, beyond, um, beyond my questions if you feel that's um, uh, necessary or appropriate as we go. Certainly will do. 
Thank you. So can I kick off then and say, look, you, you've had about six months, uh, which is fantastic. Could you tell us the what you think the three most valuable things you've taken away so far are? Yeah, so the three most valuable things. What I'd like to do is frame first kind of where I came from. So I'm mm, a former U.S. Awesome. Army logistics officer. I served on active duty for eight years, deployed four times in nine countries, three continents, and 15 U.S. states. I led complex logistics formations to effectuate Department of Defense objectives across the globe. I then made a decision late last year to make a career change. And ultimately, I decided on this program to help me make that jump from the military back to the civilian life. I think that the Essex MBA produces uh, three different variables that I have found a lot of value in. The first is the friendships. I have classmates from 11 different nations and instructors from five different nations across three different continents. That's a diversity that candidly you're not going to find in every single program, both in the United States and in the UK. So I value the diversity of perspective that's brought by my peers in the classroom where every single day I'm exposed to the palm of the world. I get to see and feel and live their perspective. And that's something that I had not fully anticipated when I first got here. The second is, as an MBA candidate, and James already alluded to it, we focus on presentations quite a bit. The goal is to be conversant in novel topics. Our modules are built to bring you around the boardroom, where you can see from each executive chair the very important function they manage in the overall relationship of business. Mm. That's been important for me. I left the United States Army and needed to learn the language of business in order to transfer my logistics skills to a private sector and be value add in that organization on the first day. So the MBA provides me that opportunity to learn the language of business while being inculcated in the actual role of every single executive and demonstrate mastery of that topic through presentation every single week. The final one is the cultural experience. I live in a beautiful area in England. The campus is absolutely wonderful. Uh, we have truly the most international cohort of individuals when I walk out these doors that I've ever seen, having been to many countries across the globe. So between the friends, the culture, and the pragmatic grounding of the, the curriculum, I think those are the three takeaways I have from the Essex MBA thus far. Fantastic, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, slightly different question, but uh, along the same lines here. So you're six months in, um, but have you had your chance to start over again? Uh, what do you What do you wish you'd known from the if you'd had this at the outset? Yeah, it's a great question, James. So I suspect that we have a couple of viewers out there who are trying to find a way to say yes. So I was in a similar position last year where there was concern and anxiety and self-doubt. Am I choosing the right path? Is this where I need to go? There's the concern of integrating into a new culture, of leaving a secure job, of leaving an identity, of perhaps separating yourselves from family and support networks and going into a journey that's pretty new. I had a lot of stress and anxiety associated with that. And I can candidly say today, having been six months in the program, I shouldn't have. I walked into Essex Business School on the first day. I had an amazing supportive staff. I had friends in the first 10 minutes. I was amidst a beautiful area of England, and I cannot express to you enough how much stress I felt and how I look back at that now and wish I hadn't. There's a lot of people on this call that I suspect are in that same position where you're trying to find a way to get to yes, but you're feeling a bit of self-doubt. So that's my position. I wish at the outset I hadn't had that self-doubt because I've lived this life and I'm very confident that each and every one of us have found our way with remarkable grace. Thank you, Jimmy. Well, I'm glad we've, we've been able to help that along the way. That's really, I appreciate you being so candid about those, about those issues. Thank you. Um, now, earlier, you, you said it was a, a new journey and there was a certain amount of anxiety you had in, in the, pr the prospect of it. And I have to say that earlier in my presentation, I have emphasized um, that it is fairly hard work. Um, how have you been able to balance the, the academic workload with your, what I might call your wider commitment to, to career and other activities as well, for that matter? Yeah. So what I like about the Essex MBA is there's a lot that you do control. 
Now it's an intensive coursework. You're going to be in class quite a bit and the modules have a certain uh, level of intensity associated with them. But much of the coursework is based upon papers and presentations, which is not only great and pragmatically grounding one in the skills of business, but it's things that I can control. Every day, all I need to do is show up with the self-discipline to change something, to do something, to action something. And I found the work-life balance to be very reasonable. So we are one hour outside of London. We're about six to seven hours south of Edinburgh. And there are multiple cities within 20 to 30 minutes of Colchester by train or bus. I've used the weekends on multiple occasions to go and explore the countryside in various cities, see the different castles and historic places across the country, and have a very unique English and British cultural experience. So what I would offer to students, there's always concern about the work-life balance perspective, but it's manageable. It's entirely within your control. And as long as you plan your schedule, are disciplined, and diligently execute in line with your commitments, you will have plenty of time to have as much cultural immersion as you desire. Fantastic. I'm really glad to hear that, Jimmy. Thank you. Thank you for your advice on that one. Um, again, um, one of the oddities, really, the MBA is that it, it's quite an intense experience. And when you're in it, it I think it can feel um, quite lengthy. But one of the things I know that's always in the back of MBA's minds is, well, this is actually a relatively brief interlude um, in the context of my, my life and career. So could you tell us perhaps a little bit about your future plans and um, how um, or if the, the MBA has, has impacted on them? What's next? It has. So coming from the United States, there is what I call the Hogwarts perspective. And that is many Americans think of castles as wizards and uh, different robes across the UK and England. And, and there's some truth to that. But there's a certain perspective that Americans have where they think this is really cool. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of pulled several folks across the world in, in the U.S., and, and that impacts their, their hiring potential. So what I'll offer to you is organizations today, especially as we move into a globalized economy, they need people with a global perspective. They need people that have diverse thought and connections across industry and country lines to help bridge those gaps that we see in business today and in government, for that matter. Um, I'm radically open-minded with where I'll end up. Whether I end up in the United Kingdom or head back to the United States, I've not fully decided yet, but I'm having conversations with multiple companies, small and large, on both sides of the pond. What I would offer to most of our candidates is that in the United States and also in the United Kingdom, the challenge of degree cost is always a metric that affects students. And this program, as James alluded to, is a remarkable value for the money. There are other programs that I looked at across the UK that are remarkably more expensive. And for the value you get for your money at this institution, I have nothing but strong things to say because you're not going to find a 25,000 pound program with this level of education across the entire educational enterprise. So between looking at potential opportunities on both sides of the pond, being more than pleased with the cost of the program and the product that's being provided. I kind of dodged the question to say I'm open-minded and we'll see where I ultimately end up, but I'm, I think that we'll land on our feet. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad there's lots of opportunities out there and we'll, yeah, we'll see where we get to. We'll see where we get to. So my last, my last question really is a much more open one. It's just to say, you know, there's an audience in front of us all at the moment. Um, have you any have you any tips, um, uh, maybe two or three um, uh, pieces of advice you, you'd be willing to hand on to them? Yeah, I do. So you are in the former Roman capital of England in Colchester. So if you are if you're going to choose to come here, you're in one of the most beautiful areas of the entire country. So use this opportunity to have that cultural immersive experience that is right at the tip of your fingers. You are one bus or one train ride away from having an absolutely amazing day. Just before the holiday break, I went up to Edinburgh, six hours on the train and spent four days and finalized one of my papers from a hostel uh, right next to a church that's about 800 years old. That's an educational experience that you can value. I live in the historic part of Colchester, two minutes from Roman ruins and three minutes from an 800 year old castle. Every day I walk by, I have that experience. 
The other factor is this campus is uniquely diverse. It's its own little city within a city. And if you're concerned about not having a support network here, let me assure you that you will. There's over 40 different campus clubs and organizations. There's more sports organizations than I can count. And when you go out onto the different squares on campus, there's an event every single day. So I would advise if you have a chance, visit. But when you make it here, leave the building a little bit and have a bit of an experience throughout the campus to go see what other folks are doing. And I promise you, you're going to make friends. The final point, ultimately we all engage in educational activity to gain skills, to gain knowledge or language and abilities and a different perspective that hopefully leads to valued employment later. I'm very confident in this program's ability to help me position myself to seek high paying employment that also brings me personal satisfaction while positively contributing to an organization. This is a transaction, if you will. It's not always popular to say, but ultimately I'm paying an institution money for them to teach me. The value you're getting is second to none. And I am highly confident that if you come into this program with the right mindset, the right discipline, and you have a desired end state, you're going to achieve that. I certainly have, and I look forward to the next few months. We continue coursework and ultimately all land on our feet in various industries across the world. Jimmy, thank you. Thank you very much for those endorsements. I'm, I'm glad the course is working out for you. Um, and also, if I may, thank you for being so so honest and open um, um, about a number of your experiences and and how you felt about things over the over the duration. I always think in the end, how, it's how people feel um, is what they remember ultimately at the end. And it, I'm, I'm glad it's been so positive. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you for sharing you. No, that. Much appreciated. Super. Right. Um, mm, that's a any. question. That's a question there for Jimmy um, on the question and answer feature. Um, so, Jimmy, did you expect this diversity, um, and were you looking for it intentionally? Um, yeah. Yeah. What a great question. Um, the answer is yes, but I did not have the same depth of perspective I have now. So candidly, I looked at over 10 different institutions across the United Kingdom and settled on three. This was my number one choice. I was aligned with the curriculum. I loved the location. I actually visited the school back in late 2022, October of 2022, if my memory serves. And I was able to get a, a little bit of a view of the diversity that they had there. But it was not until my first day that I walk into a classroom from folks from different nations that I had candidly never met before. There are individuals in my class today where I have never met a natural born citizen of that nation in my entire life, having deployed across the world with the United States Army. So the answer is I did target that, so yes, but I did not fully understand the true life impact that would have and the depth that is actually offered by this program and this institution at large. Thanks, Jimmy. Thank you. Um, I do not see any other questions on the chat box. Maria, do you? Uh, no, for now we don't have any more questions, but uh, everyone who is listening, I would like to invite you once again, if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to ask. We will wait a couple of more minutes for you. Thanks, Maria. Well, I'll, I'll take this as an endorsement then of how, how thorough we've been, but I do urge you to ask at this moment in time, um, while, you, while you've got some, uh, this audience, if you will, or, or myself and, and Jimmy and Darshini in front of you, um, because applications can be a complex process, I realise that, in a whole variety of different ways. And while I think the information about the course on the website is very detailed, there are kind of nuances to it, which can only really be answered by someone like Jimmy, who's on the course, uh, or indeed perhaps myself, um, who has oversight of the whole program. So um, um, please do, please do drop us a line um, um, and we will be happy to answer. Yeah, James, if I may, I can talk uh, very briefly about 
the application process from my perspective. Mm -hmm. Please, uh, so there was, of course, a CV or a resume that we provide, which is pretty standard. What I found to be interesting was the personal statement. So that allowed a bit of introspection as to what I desired out of the program. Now, following the submission of the CV and the personal statement, there was an interview with a member of staff. And naturally, one is nervous when they're going to do a, an interview of that nature. But the person who interviewed me was very gracious and very kind, and I felt welcome immediately. What I discovered through the interview process is my goals were fully aligned with the university. I already had visited the campus, already spent with staff and spoke to folks from the institution. But as I went through the process and could get a feel for what's the, the bureaucracy associated with it, I found there was actually very little bureaucracy. Whenever I would email an address asking for information, there was a person that would respond, not a bot. There was a person within a few days that would respond. Whenever I'd reach out to the institution, someone would very rapidly get back to me with valued information. Whenever I wanted to visit the campus, there was an individual that walked me through and handed me off to the business school, and I was able to have a personalized tour of the actual place I'd be studying at. What I discovered throughout the UK is that's not the same experience. So you're not a number at this institution. When I was visiting different UK sites, there were candidly some schools where I felt a number, where it should be you should be privileged to be walking through our halls just as a candidate. This institution was eagerly embracing me, and that speaks to the culture and the values the University of Essex and the Essex Business School exudes in their classroom. We embrace diverse thought and different ideas. And I felt that not only when I walked in the door, but as I went through the actual process as a candidate to try to get admittance into the institution. Fantastic. There's a, there's a couple of questions that have come up out of this, which is great. I'm going to handle them in the, the opposite order, because I think the, the second one is kind of falls neatly out of what you've just said there, Jimmy. So the question is, um, how long did the application process take? So for me, if I remember right, it was about a month, month and a half from start to finish, give or take. But really, it, I, I would say the application process was not overburdensome. So most of the people who are entering this, this institution, we're working professionals. You're not going to have these arduous requirements of thousands upon thousands of pages to write things just to get your foot in the door, right? So I would say it was probably about a month from start to finish, but really it was submit a CV. Uh, it was to do the personal statement, do an interview, and then stand by and, and wait for the, the committee to notify me of my application, whether it was accepted or not. I was accepted pretty early on, which I was grateful for, and that allowed me additional planning time. What I will tell you is if you're admitted, you do need to be proactive with regards to the visa requirement. So the day I was admitted is basically the day that I was reaching out to the university to figure out how do I get my visa. So if you're super interested in going down this pathway, uh, go through the visa requirements and understand that just to some, some basic degree. And then once you're given that letter of admittance, I would recommend aggressively pursuing that visa path because uh, some of my, my friends did have challenges. I was fortunate where I did not, but I do know some of my friends were pretty close to the edge in that particular process. So do be proactive in that. Fantastic. Thank you, Jimmy. Good advice, if I may say. Um, right. So someone else has asked, um, I don't have a, they say they don't have a business background. I think in academia is what's meant there. It's education and social science. Does this matter? Uh, the simple one line answer to that or one word answer is no. Um, I'll just explain briefly what we look at. We like people to have a reasonably high level of qualification, which is why we ask for the two one. All right. But that's because you'll be set a number of written tasks, which it helps. It's not absolutely essential. It helps if you have a kind of familiarity with with producing reports and so on, which typically comes with exposure to the higher education system. But what we're really interested in, right, is not really the qualification so much as your managerial experience all right so we want to know that you have been out there already and you have managed uh, within an organization or managed an organization um, and that doesn't have to be in the private sector or the public sector it can it can be in any sphere of activity all right but that's the that's the key thing all right so that the background in, in, in is not important it's the managerial element that's um, uh, that's important to us here 
Yeah, James, regarding that, I know from several of my classmates, we have folks from just about every industry you can imagine, whether that's finance, education, the government, business, former CEOs and CFOs, down to uh, someone who dealt with the pharmaceutical industry, was mm -hmm. a pharmacist for a while. So I'm a former political science military officer in the logistics corps. I have no business background whatsoever. So uh, that's certainly correct. And don't let that deter you at all. Uh, this program values the diversity that's brought by different perspectives, different organizations, different people. And my classroom is a, a mishmash of different capability, and we value that every single day. Okay. I think there's another, a, a, yeah. Do you want to read it out, Darshini? Forgive me. Yes. Go for it. Yeah, so this is for Jimmy again. Um, so... So you said you liked the campus location. Do you consider it an advantage um, that it is close to London, Jimmy, in your opinion? Yes. So you get the benefits of London without the London prices. So the day you fly into Heathrow, you're going to figure out that London is an expensive place. When you move an hour to Colchester, you're going to discover that it's far less expensive than London. So you're about 45 minutes to an hour away by train. That's not that far, and it's relatively cheap to get there. Uh, London ultimately has a lot of networking opportunities, and it is a job hub for the United Kingdom, where Colchester offers you a bit of a reprieve from that location, where you can get the countryside, the historic experience. You can have a very English feel or go to the campus and have a very international feel. So I think it's proximity to London. You get all the benefits without the detriment, where you can go to the networking events, but ultimately not take out another mortgage or a a car loan on trying to buy a, a Big Mac at the McDonald's in Colchester. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, everyone. I have um, one more question for Jimmy. Um, I was curious, what is your um, favorite memory from the pro program up to now? Do you have yeah, that's a, uh, some interesting story from with your colleagues in the campus, something related to the, your MBA program, something that you will remember? I do. So I, I kind of have two, so you'll have to forgive me. I'm going to be indecisive on limiting it to one. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we recently had a director's workshop. Uh, we've also had various alumni events where uh, alumni have come in and spoken to us and, and given us their perspective, having graduated from the program. Both the director workshops and the alumni events are a value add to all of us, and we appreciate them. We had an opportunity to go out to lunch in one of the on-campus dining sites. There's actually a pub on campus. That's new to an American. We don't have those on our campuses. There's an actual pub on this university campus. And we went there and had a nice afternoon lunch and a few pints. Being able to connect with your classmates in an informal setting and loop in the faculty, the staff, the alumni, and the speakers brought in that's a special moment, right? That's, that's a good old day sort of moment that you just do not have every single day. This campus allows for that opportunity to occur. Now, likewise, some of those moments occur outside of the classroom. As I've alluded to before, uh, you are in one of the most historic spots on the uh, British Isles. And I would be lying if I said my class did not go to a few of the different pubs and frequent those after class on Fridays after different uh, presentations. So I would encourage you to recognize the value that's brought by your classmates, the location that you're in, and the unique experience you're going to have by getting to go to a pub after the campus and after the event, and just really enjoying that evening surrounded by people that you, you know, you appreciate, and you grow to really respect. Thank you so much. Uh, sounds like you're having a really good time. And I wish you a lot of success with your MBA at Essex. And thank you everyone for participating. Um, we will upload the webinar on our website as well. And if you have um, any more questions that come up uh, later, uh, don't hesitate to ask. And yeah, I've no, also put it on the chat box, our email address, our MBA team. Um, so if you have any other questions, like after this webinar, do feel free to reach out to us um, at mba at sx.ac.uk. It's on the chat box right now. Um, yeah, go ahead, Maria. 
Yeah, I will send to everyone also an email afterwards with uh, the recording of the webinar and uh, with uh, our contact. So you can always contact us and um, ask your questions and get in touch with uh, Essex. <laughs> so have a wonderful day and goodbye for me. Thank you, everyone. Bye.